Some news from the oil sector leads our bulletin tonight. The Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, has questioned uh, government's decision to expend $3.8 million of funds from the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, GNPC, to pay for the cost of litigation on Ghana's maritime boundary dispute with La Côte d'Ivoire. According to the committee, the entire cost of the dispute should have been funded by government and not the GNPC. Ebenezer Sabote has the rest of the story. According to the Piacano report of 2017, the GNPC spent about $3.8 million on legal fees, secretarial and other expenditure during the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, ITLOS, litigation, other hub. Chairman of PIAC, Dr. Steve Mentiao, in an interview with members of the Institute of Financial and Economic Journalists, called for a probe and urgent steps to refund the cash to the GNPC. Also speaks to the way we are abusing the GNPC as an entity. We did not set GNPC up to be paying our litigation fee for us as a sovereign country. Okay, and the dispute between Ivory Coast and the Republic of Ghana were disputes between two sovereign states. Properly, you actually finance your litigation costs through your budget or through whatever contingency fund that you have. Uh, again, we have a Ghana Ivory Coast border dispute or commission. And so if government actually had provided or budgeted for the amount, you disperse the amount to the commission to take responsibility for financing the cost of our litigation to the boundary commission. The GNPC has in recent times been cited for some corporate governance inconsistencies between its board chairman and chief executive. According to Dr. Mantiao, the political interference as a result of the turf war will have serious implications on doing business with international firms. GNPC is a commercial entity. And so when you politicize it the way we have, uh, you make it unattractive for the company to attract uh, the brightest and best and the good companies of this world. Um, secondly, for a company that behaves, takes money and applies it to areas that are not its core functions, you find it difficult if any financial institution were to do any due diligence uh, for the purpose of lending money to GMPC. I doubt a GMPC will go through. Dr. Mantiao met members of IFED as part of dissemination workshop sponsored by German International Corporation, GIZ, to discuss the findings in its annual report. PIAC has called on Parliament to intensify its role of ensuring that budgeted expenditure for GNPC falls in line with its core mandate. Even Sabote support for Joy Business. Now, government has now taken steps to secure financial and insurance cover to support national disasters across the country. That's after signing an agreement with a specialized agency under the African Union called the Africa Risk Capacity to manage national disasters. George Raffi has more. The Africa Risk Agency is expected to also provide the required financial guarantees to help de-risk the agri sectors and minimize impact of natural disasters on all the sectors of the country. It would also help government develop early warning sectors in managing disasters. Speaking to Joy Business after signing the agreement, Deputy Finance Minister Kweku Kwatin told Joy Business the move would help reduce cost of doing business in the country. It makes uh, doing business in our economy less risky which has implications for the price of the facilities that we take. But perhaps more importantly, it signals to investors, uh, not just financial investors, but people who like to locate their investments here. Board chairman of the Africa Risk Capacity, Mohamed Biavugui, talked about how this deal would also help improve investments into the agricultural sector. This is now the permission to allow us to spend money here, uh, combine our resources with those of the government in order to, as I said earlier, define that risk profile, get to a position where Ghana can decide exactly what are the nitty gritties about protecting the country against drought. This time we are starting with drought. The National Disaster Management Organization, NATMO, also indicates that the agreement would help reduce the turnaround time for responding to national disasters. Eric Nanajman Prempe is Director General of the organization. We are uh, an, a growing economy. We don't have enough financial resources and that is the main reason 
why our response has always been challenged. But with insurance, the moment you have insurance, your response will be accurate at all times. That is why we are hooking up into this uh, ALC thing. The Africa capacity risk over the years has already helped other African countries to effectively deal with national disasters. The deal will also help strengthen their disaster risk management system and access rapid and predictable financing when disaster strikes to protect the food security and livelihoods of the vulnerable population. The Commodities Exchange has in the past three months traded 400,000 cities worth of white and yellow maize. CEO of the Commodity Exchange, Dr. Kadri Alpha, says with the provision of six warehouses by government, more trading activity is expected soon. Currently, a bag of maize is trading on the exchange at 25% higher than the market price of 55 cities per bag. We launched at the time that you know, the harvest season had just begun. So the way exchanges work is that you have to initially aggregate. Um, so this is the time that we're actually stocking our warehouses. Um, we have six warehouses, and um, most of them are currently nearly full. We still have a lot of uh, farmers bringing their commodities to us. Uh, we've so far traded nearly about, nearly about 400,000 um, Ghana cities word of farmers' grains, you know, which uh, most new exchanges usually is very difficult for them to achieve that, um, and particularly at the time that um, the harvest season is going already and is we're just starting to stock. I mean, we have to remember that this is not the time that you can usually even have, you know, uh, you know, ma uh, grading, uh, sorry, trading taking place in a, a structured uh, system because at this time everybody's harvesting everyone can go out and buy the maize but the most important thing is the services that we are providing at this stage the drying services the cleaning services the storage services you know the warehouse seats uh, fire services the grading services that is key because that is what actually improves the quality of you know the harvest as well as prepare the farmers to have a better, you know, prices in the future. So it's not just about how much volume you have traded, it's also about how you have impacted on the on the system, you know, with the surface that you have. And that is exactly what we're doing now. Now, management of Darko Farms in the Ashanti region has revealed plans to revamp operations to regain its spot as the leading producer of poultry products in the country. This success will boost the consumption of locally produced poultry products. This was made known when participants of Cosmos Innovation Agritech Challenge made a stopover at the factory in Kumasi. It started as an egg production company in 1967 and gradually introduced the rearing and processing of poultry as well as the production of poultry feed. However, due to some challenges including unfair competition from imported frozen chicken, the company was forced to reduce production. I had some few challenges due to policy issues and then economy issues. Um, that is where we are. General manager of the company, Augustine Kuda, explains the company is now ready to move beyond its past challenges and improve the consumption of local birds. He added that the company would soon install new machinery that will enable it to slaughter 20,000 birds in a day. The, the, the challenge we have at this, uh, in this part of the world is that we produce in piecemeal. We don't do mass production. And for that matter, our unit cost tend to be very high. So right now, as part of our new strategy, is to produce about 20,000 bears a day. Our growth strategy is just to make sure that we bring down as much as possible our cost of production, so that at least we can produce more, grow, expand. Mr. Kuda added that as part of its involvement under the One District, One Factory program, elsewhere, the company is ready to offer training programs to farmers and entrepreneurs interested in poultry production. Definitely, uh, this is not, it's nothing new. It has been our style, it has been our DNA to train people who really want to go into poultry. And I would like to encourage 
um, the upcoming ones who really are interested in poultry to count on Dako farms, come up, we are willing and we are able to train anybody. Government spends an average of $150 million on the importation of frozen chicken annually, which represents 75% of chicken consumed locally. Karin Dodo's report for Joy Business. From poultry, let's talk about fish. The China Fujian Fishing Facility, where some 14 cartons of tilapia died under mysterious circumstances, has been shut down by the Environmental Protection Agency. This follows investigations which revealed the Chinese fish farm failed to abide by EPA's regulations. There's more in this report. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, has revoked the environmental permit of the China Fujian Fish Limited. The EPA says investigations indicate the Chinese firm failed to comply with conditions of the agency's environmental permit in accordance with Regulation 26 of the Environmental Assessment Regulations. This finding by the EPA somewhat contradicts an earlier statement by the Minister of Fisheries and Agriculture, Elizabeth Afolikwe, who told Joy Business the main the main cause of the fish deaths were the rise in river temperature and the opening of the Bagri Dam. It suspected to have been some uh, lack of um, oxygen because of the, the opening of the Bagri Dam. Uh, some water gushed into the, the Volta Lake and it reduced, brought down the levels of oxygen within the Volta Lake. And some farms that uh, were not properly uh, managed because these farms, uh, the cages were so close together, they were so packed that in, in, in the least uh, occurrence, uh, there could be loss of oxygen uh, within the environment that could co also cause the fish kills. So these were some of the reasons that were uh, raised. And then also um, this year we are thinking of, because of uh, the misuse of antibiotics, we suspected bacteria infection infection on the Volta Lake and we want to vaccinate, um, we do a mass vaccination. Some farms are already doing vaccination of the fish. The EPA has therefore directed the company to cease production with immediate effect, evacuate and destroy all strains of tilapia at the facility by March 8, 2019. You're watching Business Live. Now, the executive director of the Policy Initiative for Economic Development, Daniel Amate, and he is advocating uh, the creation of an economic model for the six newly created regions. He says without a clear strategy, the new regions would contribute little to economic development. We'll hear from him in a bit, uh, but first let's give you an idea of what has changed. Joining me in studio is Norvan Aqua Hayford. Uh, who's been taking a look at the map. So how is it looking like, Nova? Okay, so right now we have 16 regions, mm. and what it means is that you have some other district carved out of, of regional, um, regional regions that we had mm. to create these 16 regions. But then you want to look at what will be the economic value or importance Precisely. or what will bring money to this area. Don't forget that the president said the seed fund mm -hmm. for all the regions, the six of them, is 20 million for each of them. Okay. And, but then what is the, um, happening in these regions? If you want to look at the economic value, now let's take the OT region, which is one region that came from the Volta um, region. And so if you look at it, I mean, if you look at it, what it means is, is that the OT region, you want to know what exactly is going on there in terms of what are the economic activities in I, that area. I know there's a lot of farming over there. I know there's uh, the, the court space rise a lot, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yes, <laughs> you, you can think of that. And they are more into crop farming, livestock, mm. and inland fishing. Okay. That is in that particular area. Because don't forget that you have the Krachi, Ketakrachi, and all those areas found within the OT region. And okay. That's mainly what they do there. And so, and then when you want to look at the kind of, you know, foodstuffs 
when it comes to the farming that they do, you're talking of yam, um, you're talking of cassava, you're talking of some cereals and legumes. Those are the things that happen so in Let's move up north because uh, we have, uh, is it three more regions up north? Yes, you, you, yes you have um, um, the northern east mm -hmm. and then you have the savannah, okay, which came from the northern region, if you want to say it. The northern region as And I guess they are also into farming and uh, livestock production. Yes, you want to look at the northern east. The northern east, what is interesting that you must know is that the capital, which is Nalingu Gambaga, okay. that was used to be the uh, Gambaga used to be the capital for the northern territories. Okay. That was even before they divided in, into the um, upper east, upper west, and the northern region that we had. It used to be the capital, and then it lost it to Tamale after the northern region was created. Now, because they have a region of their own, they've gained back that capital status. Finally, Norman, let's, let's move to the Bono um, area. The, we have Bono Hafo now. We have Bo uh, Hafo. We have Ahafo itself, right? Ahafo and, itself. And then Bono and then, East. And then you have the Bono East. What happens over there? Okay, so if you want to look at the Bono East, don't forget that that area, which has mm. a capital as Techiman, more of tomatoes. Okay. I mean, and you have, you have a tomato factory actually situated in that area. And then if you want to talk of the Western North region, which is Sehui, uh, Awaso um, area there. Yeah. Don't forget cocoa, timber, Great. rubber. That is what goes on there. We hope that these regions will take advantage of what they do there and create some fact, serious economic activities. In fact, let's hear from the executive director of the policy initiative for economic development. Uh, his thoughts on whether or not the creation of these new regions uh, would add anything to the economy. Politically, it may be expedient, but from an economic perspective, I don't think creation of new regions will lead to economic development. Why is that? <clears throat> yeah, the reason is simple. We had a history, okay, where we've created districts on a notion that once said districts are created, it will lead to the development of the, of the local area. Mm -hmm. We have not seen that. We still have so many districts that are marginalized, lack of resources. They don't have what it takes to mobilize resources. And uh, the, 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 performance, the economic performance of the districts are highly marginalized. Okay, so the, it, clearly there's no correlation between creation of a district and then economic development. If you want to develop, develop an area, there should be a deliberate economic model and policy to be able to drive that. So creation of a new district, uh, from my humble prospect, uh, perspective as a professional, I don't think it will lead to uh, automatically lead to uh, development of an area it needs to be a conscious uh, uh, development model towards that. If you can do that, then of course it will lead. But uh, just the creation of a new district will not you know, lead to economic development of the area. OK. Uh, but, but there are positives to this, because with the creation of the new, new regions, we expect that there will be creation of jobs uh, to deal with the unemployment situation in the country. But that's just not the only thing, right? Yes, of course, it will lead to creation of um, jobs. Once a new district has been created, we need an administrative setup. And what it means is that people will be, create, uh, will be employed to take care of uh, the administrative machinery, the running of the various regions. So it will, it will lead to uh, creation of employment. But don't also forget that the, uh, 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 employment opportunities also goes with economic cost. And if you don't plan well for it, what it means is that uh, you have difficulty balancing your, your, your budget. Your bu bu and in fact, he, he also talks about the 1D1F and how that can be also instrumental I mean, in ensuring that these regions contribute to uh, economic development. We'll have that second part of the conversation. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Thanks very much indeed, Norvan Aqua here for that be it for Business Live tonight. Thanks for watching. More news on our website, joybusinessnews.com. We are back same time tomorrow.